Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this Palm Sunday, on which we see the strangest sight we have maybe ever seen, a lamb riding on a donkey. Now there's something you just don't see every day. But that is what Palm Sunday is all about. And today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of the feast of the Passover. And on Passover, Israel must choose its lamb for the sacrifice. According to God's instructions to Moses in the book of Exodus, the lamb must be select, that must be selected must meet certain criteria, three in particular. It must be young, it must be male, it must be without blemish. Lots of lambs may be young and male, but there is only one that is without blemish, holy, pure, perfect, without sin, and that one lamb is riding on a donkey. So what about all those other lambs that had been sacrificed on Jewish altars all throughout the Old Testament? What about them? Every single one of those lambs sacrificed for sin was only a meaningful sacrifice insofar as it pointed through faith to this lamb. This lamb riding on a donkey into Jerusalem to be the Passover lamb to be sacrificed. The first time a lamb is mentioned in the Old Testament is in Genesis 4, where we're told that Abel was a keeper of sheep. And God was pleased with Abel's offerings. Because when Abel offered a lamb to God for his sin, he did so in anticipation of that lamb that would take away the sin of his mother and father, Adam and Eve. Why else would the Lord be pleased with Abel's sacrifice? For it is not lambs or sheep or goats or bulls that God is pleased with, but faith in the one lamb that is riding on that donkey to be sacrificed for the sin of the world. You don't hear the word lamb or sheep mentioned again in the Old Testament until we get to Abraham. Abraham raised sheep and would no doubt have offered many of them to God as sacrifices for the atonement of sins not only for himself, but for his whole family, just as Job had done for his. One day, God told Abraham to sacrifice not a lamb, but his son, his only son, whom he loves. As Father Abraham led his son Isaac to this place of sacrifice, it is the son who carries the wood that he will be sacrificed on. And the son goes in perfect obedience to his father. There is no sign of resistance from Isaac. And yet, Isaac does not seem to comprehend what is about to take place. He asks, Father, here is the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham responds with words of faith so deep that we can only stand and marvel at the faith of this man. God will provide for himself the lamb that is for the burnt offering, my son. What faith this man has. Abraham's prophecy was fulfilled by a ram that got its horns stuck in the thicket. But only much, much later, was it fully realized on Palm Sunday by the lamb that is riding on the donkey. This is the lamb that the prophet Isaiah saw riding over the horizon of history who bears our griefs and carries our sorrows, who is wounded for our transgressions, who is crushed by our iniquities. We need to listen to this and we need to take this to heart. Who bears our griefs, who carries our sorrows. 
What is it that causes us grief? What is it that causes us sorrow? What drains your spirit? What breaks your heart? What weighs so heavy on you that it drains every last ounce of energy that you have? Isn't it the sin that others commit against you? Isn't it the rejection of a friend? The betrayal of someone whom you trusted? The breaking up of a relationship? The death of a loved one? Isn't it just having to watch? Because frankly, there is nothing that you can do to relieve the pain or take away her suffering or prevent his death. Aren't these the arrows that pierce our soul and the poison that fills us with grief and sorrow along with so many more? The lamb riding on the donkey bears all of this. He carries it upon himself. There isn't a drop, not a speck, not an atom that he does not bear and carry of our grief, our sorrows on himself. So now just listen to this. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And so here's where we make the shift from the passive to the active. This is not now about sin that's been inflicted on us at all. This is about the sin that we have inflicted on others. The self-absorption of being so wrapped up in ourselves, in our own little world, that blinds us and deafens us to our neighbor who is in need, our neighbor who is Jesus, who is hungry and we gave no food, who is thirsty and we gave no drink, who is a stranger and we gave no welcome, who is naked and we gave no clothes, who was sick and in prison and we were too busy, too busy with our big, huge, all-important, incredibly trivial, small, meaningless life to visit and say, take heart. Jesus bears your griefs and carries your sorrows. He was wounded for your transgression. He was crushed for your iniquity. The lamb is wounded with every wound that every single one of our transgressions has inflicted upon others and thereby inflicted upon him. Inflicted either by our commission or our omission. For every time we have crushed someone's spirit, either by the things that we have said like, I hate you, or the things that we should have said but failed to say like, I forgive you. He is crushed. And how does the lamb respond to all of this? He opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, like a sheep that before the shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. After all, what would he say? Father, save me from this hour. No, but for this hour I have come. Father, glorify your name. In a few minutes we will sing, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth. Take note of the words as you sing them. A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth, The Guilt of Sinners Bearing. And laden with the sins of earth, None else the burden sharing. Goes patient on, grows weak and faint to slaughter led without complaint. That spotless life to offer. He bears the stripes, the wounds, the lies, the mockery, and yet replies, All this I gladly suffer. We should think about that. We should think about that the next time we are one to complain that life just isn't fair. He is like Isaac, 
who obeys his father Abraham without complaint and lays down on the wood without resistance. And yet he is greater than Isaac because he knows he knew from all eternity before the world was created, before he left the right hand of God the Father, he knows that he is the Lamb of God to be sacrificed for the sin of the whole world. He goes uncomplaining forth to the cross because he knows. He knows that the offering that he carries in his own body atones for your sin and heals your wounds and bears your griefs, and comforts your sorrows, and makes you holy, perfect, pure, without sin. He goes uncomplaining forth because, well, just because he loves you. St. Paul says that this lamb that is riding on the donkey is the one true God. He does not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. It's already his. Why would he grasp for it? So if you think that the picture of a lamb riding on a donkey seems a bit absurd, how about this one? Now we see God riding on a donkey. But this is Palm Sunday, and this is what Palm Sunday is all about. God who is everything made himself nothing. We should think about that the next time that all we can think about is how shall I make something of myself. Literally it reads, he emptied himself. He emptied himself while his disciples were arguing amongst themselves as to who was the greatest. He emptied himself while we were still so full of ourselves. It's not that he stopped being God. If there's one thing that God cannot do, it's to stop being God. It's just that he didn't use the power of his divinity that was rightly his to save himself when he perfectly well could have. He could have turned those stones into bread. He could have jumped safely from the pinnacle. He could have foiled Judas's plan for betrayal. He could have named those who struck him. He could have called a legion of angels to fight for him. He could have saved himself and come down from the cross, but he didn't. He made himself nothing. He emptied himself of himself. He was in the form of God, the omnipotent, the omniscient, an omnipresent God, took the form of a human servant. Literally, it reads, of a slave. One who takes orders, who does just what he's told, and opens not his mouth in protest. And all because, all because, God is faithful to his word. He is good. He is merciful. He is gracious. He is love. These are the divine attributes that he does not empty himself of. He emptied himself of the power that is rightfully his to fulfill you with the faithfulness and the goodness and the mercy and the grace and the love that is rightfully his. Sometimes we get that a bit mixed up, don't we? We think that Jesus gives us his attributes of power and knowledge, but he doesn't. No matter what all the TV evangelists might convince you to, to think. He gives us only those attributes of his that can only be used, that can only be used by humbling ourselves and emptying ourselves. Have this mind among yourselves that is in Christ Jesus who emptied himself for you. Standing before the cross of Christ, then, we see him who did not humble himself or empty himself for his own benefit. There was no profit in the cross for him. 
He who by nature is sinless came to be sin in order to set us free from our sin. He who is life died so that we might not die but live. He who is all in all made himself nothing because you are everything to him. As we will sing it, Yes, Father, yes, most willingly, I'll bear what you command me. My will conforms to your decree, I'll do what you have asked me. O wondrous love, what have you done? The Father offers up his Son, desiring our salvation. O love, how strong you are to save. You lay the one into the grave who built the earth's foundation. Today this Lamb, this God, this Lamb of God, rides to you on a small wafer of unleavened bread and a tiny sip of wine. And it's hard to picture, I know. But this is why he rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, to bear the griefs and to carry the sorrows that you have borne and carried into this room this morning. He came to forgive the transgressions and pardon the iniquity of our sin that we confessed before him in this room this morning. And when it is all said and done, all that we are left to say is, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen.